Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everyone. Thank you for tuning in to another Super Tease video. We've got one more covenant to do here for the Restoration Druid, and that is going to be the Kyrian, one of the most powerful covenant options. And in a future video, I am going to be ranking them uh, in terms of strength and power for specifically PvP, I think, at least first. Maybe we'll do PvE a bit later, um, but I'll be ranking them based on the power that I think that they have for the Restoration Druid, which one is the best, second, third, fourth, you know, give them a little bit of a placing, like a tournament. Um, but in this video, we're going to be reviewing everything in detail that Kyrian have to offer uh, as to whether or not will, it will fit to your specific playstyle and your specific goals and your interests. So much like the other covenants, you're going to get two spells, you're going to get one that is Druid specific, and this is the Kyrian Bond. Uh, and you'll cast this on an ally and then every minute you can empower the bond so I can empower this with another player here that I've casted it on uh, I'll be energized I will be increasing my healing and my damage by 30% until it runs out and I'll be replicating all of the healing that I do onto the target that I'm bonded with so an interesting little extra damage amp here for you and your ally so you could be playing with an affliction warlock empower the bond during their dark glare or when they're going to be getting a lot of soul harvests so you could use this to benefit their damage you could use it just to benefit your own healing let's say two targets are taking pressure you activate the bond under your teammate and you heal the other target and then you'll be healing two targets at once like a beacon for a holy paladin it's very just all around solid it has a lot of playability around it in terms of when do you want to time it? There's a lot of player agency in this, a high skill cap, you could say. So if you're interested in something with a lot of a high skill cap, then this is definitely one of those abilities. Your other one is going to be summoning a steward. And most importantly, when you call in your little Swolken, is that he's going to be giving you a vial. And you get three charges of the vial. As a baseline, it heals 15% of your health. So you get a little bit of a heal. Um, but the main portion of the Kyrian, as far as the abilities go, is going to be empowering the bond, getting extra damage, and getting extra healing during that one minute timer. And druids don't really get that. I mean, at all. Like you, you're not. You don't have power infusion. You're not really buffing your teammates. So it gives you access to gameplay that you otherwise wouldn't have available, and bolsters that as a that it would otherwise be a weakness for the Druid class. So it is just pretty solid overall. And getting a little bit of an extra heal on the Vile, you can't really go wrong. Now you're going to have options here within the talent trees of the specific covenant that you choose. And here for the Kyrian, we've got Pelagos on his first tier. Using a spell or ability increases your versatility by 1% for 10 seconds. Using another spell or ability increases the amount by 1% when it is not a repeat. So this is a, com a copy of the hit combo and it just gives you a bit of extra versatility. As a Restoration Druid, you have a lot of instant spells that you can weave, so it's not it's not difficult to maintain this, and again, it adds a lot of player agency. You, If you're playing well, you'll maintain this stack at a high, at the 5% mark for most of the game, and if you're playing incorrectly, then you're gonna lose out on it. So again, a nice little kind of way to outplay other Druids. Uh, on the second tier, Vial of Serenity now heals you for an additional 35% health, but it's gonna be a heal over time effect. If it has synergy with our mastery, extra heal over time effects, that's a really strong heal. Super powerful in terms of your self-defense along with versatility. I'm already liking this talent tree for Restoration Druid, and I'm only two tiers in uh, for PvP. Now in PvE, you probably don't care so much about how much the vial is going to be healing you, but in PvP, these are pretty solid options. Defeating an enemy lowers the cooldown of your Vile of Serenity. You don't defeat enemies in ranked PvP very often, so you're not really benefiting from that, and you don't really care about the Vial in PvE, so not really a great pick on either side here for PvE, unfortunately, if you're looking to play both aspects of the game. On the third tier, we've got Bond of Friendship, defeating an enemy, reducing the cooldown of your steward's non-vile services. Again, quality of life, this is a tier that you're likely going to be selecting based on the conduits. And when they become available, I'll be doing a review, and that will help you select which conduits you want to go for. Because these conduits rank up and they level similarly to the cloak. 
in, in Battle for Azeroth. So you want to make sure that you're getting the right one and you're working on the right one uh, for you. So make sure you're subscribed to the channel. I'm going to be pumping out information. I want this to be a good resource for everybody so everybody's making the right choice for them moving into Shadowlands because it is a big deal and it is a big choice. And if you have any information that I've managed to miss, please feel free to leave it in the comment section. Uh, I just want as much information as we can out there uh, to make sure that we're all making the right choice here. Road of Trials, defeating an enemy grants you 10% movement speed. Again, defeating an enemy and movement speed, we don't really care. Walk Together, Pelagos, periodically sends you crafting materials, uh, increasing for every raid, dungeon, battle, and arena, and quest completed while soulbound. So a little bit more resources, it's just quality of life. And if you're, ba if you're a performance player, you like any high parses, high keystones, high arena ratings, RPG ratings, you're gonna pick this based on the conduit. Uh, but if you're not, then pick to your heart's content in, ter in terms of what is a quality of life change for you. On the final tier here, Kindred Spirits increases your mastery by 5% for 20 seconds and occasionally expels Sorrowful Memories. Walking through Sorrowful Memories extends this effect. So now this, this end of the tier is kind of redeeming Pelagos for PvE. And it's still really good for PvP because mastery is a solid stat as well as versatility. So you get that extra 5%. It's very similar to the Convoke the Spirits one from the Night Fae, uh, but it's half the value for half the cooldown. It's effectively the same thing. It could pair up nicely with Iron Bark and the getting extra healing on your heal over time effects um, as well. So it's just a great pick in PvP right now in terms of the throughput, solid self-sustainability, versatility based on how well you're playing, just some flat out mastery every minute to help out your healing. This is a solid tier overall if you're just looking to play any aspect of the game as a Restoration Druid. Moving forward over here to Clea on the first tier, we've got the Ascendant Vile. The Vile Serenity renders you immune to curse, disease, poison, and bleed effects. So it renders you immune, doesn't say it dispels them, but this would be a good counter to Feral Druids, Assassination Rogues, Unholy Death Knights. Even Shadow Priest to a degree, I believe Devouring Plague is a new disease brought, well, new old disease brought back into the game. Uh, you can dispel curses, you don't really care, and you can dispel poison, so you don't really care. But in PvP, good pick. In PvE, unless there's a lot of dungeons where you're dealing with diseases that removing it would be good and you don't have it on your team, which is probably unlikely, uh, it's not that great. Uh, while above 90% health, you and nearby party members gain a maximum health by 5%. So depending, I guess, on if you're in a raid, this is a really good pick because you're in the ranged group as a Resto Druid. You're just giving everyone 5% extra health for not taking damage like a good player. You know, just don't stand in fire and you get to buff your whole team. So if you're in a raid, this makes a lot of sense. Um, if you're in PvP and maybe Mythic Plus, uh, then the Ascended Vial would probably work better for you. Moving to the second tier, the Resonant Accolades when receiving healing. Uh, or healing an ally, 5% of the healing is repeated on the target over 15 seconds. So very similar to some of the Holy Priest passive healing. You're kind of treading into their uh, territory with this pick here. When receiving healing or healing an ally, 5% of the healing is repeated on the target over 15 seconds. Now you've got heal over time effects on multiple targets. If you're playing with hybrids that are also healing you, you could get a lot of value out of this. Depending on the meta um, for Mythic Plus, if we do see hybrids, this could get a lot of extra healing. In raids, it makes a lot of sense here. Uh, there's tons of healers healing everything all the time, and you're healing everything all the time. So this is Clea standing out so far as a strong raid pick for Resto Druid between Mentorship and Resonant Accolades. Bearers Pursuit, your damaging spells and abilities have a chance to decrease your target's movement speed by 30% for 20 seconds. Now you could be taking this as PvP, but it really depends on what classes you're looking to play with. If you have a composition that there are no slows in, in 2v2 or 3v3, getting access to a slow is never a bad option. Um, so an interesting pick up there. And then the pointed courage. Critical strike is increased by 1% for every nearby enemy or ally up to 5%. Well, now this one's selling me for my own personal throughput. I mean, it's I want to be number one on the parse, right? Who cares about maximum healing for the group? If I want to be number one on the parse and I want to benefit from living seed, getting 5% crit in a raid because you're pretty much always standing next to five people, um, unless there's a specific mechanic, which then this wouldn't be the best pick for you. Uh, it's just more throughput. So far, I'm sold on Clea being kind of the raid pick, but we'll have to wait and see. We've still got the second half of the tier here. Cleansing rights. After five seconds out of combat, gain a shield for 10% of your health, lasting 30 seconds. Can be difficult to get out of combat, but of all of the specs in the game, Resto Druid does do, look to do it the most often, at least in Battle for Azeroth. And if it maintains to be the case, you, will, you could get this shield quite a bit, running that Feral Affinity build. 
And in Mythic Plus, you're going to be getting this pretty much every time you finish a pull, so you can just start the fight with some extra health. While above 90% health, your mounted movement speed is increased by 10%. So if you're a throughput performance player, I think you're going cleansing rights. Um, but getting extra movement speed in some of the dungeons you can mount, yeah, I feel like it's not going to make as much of a difference as having an extra shield to just bolster maybe a, a type of like a one-hit mechanic from PvE. And on the final tier here, Valiant Strikes, you and your nearby allies critical strikes grant you stacks of Valiant Strikes, up to 40. And at 40 stacks, you heal nearby allies for 5% of their maximum health over 10 seconds. 5% over 10 seconds is not the best. And it's based on critical strikes, and critical strike is a very low value stat in PvP. This is sold to me as kind of the raid pick. If you're a raiding Resto Druid and you want to go Kyrian, uh, Kalia looks like a good pick, but it won't be easy to transition to PvP with her. It seems like it would be. This is you're dedicated as a Resto Druid in a raid. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm sold as this is kind of the raid talent spec. Moving down to the final option, Forge Light Prime Mechanicos. On the top tier, Vile Serenity also knocks nearby enemies away. Now you've got Ursula's Vortex coming back. Um, you can talent into Typhoon. You already have a lot of knockbacks, so it might just be redundant here to go charged additive. Forge Light Filter, when reduced below 35%, your Vile of Serenity automatically heals you and consumes a charge. Great little kind of quasi cheat death effect. These are super powerful in PvP. So if you're gonna PvP, this is a pretty easy pick. Um, maybe you do want to go for the knockback uh, in Mythic Plus, knock mobs out of Sanguine, but again, you should probably already have Typhoon. Maybe you just get a second one if there's a, neat, a necessary requirement for that many knockbacks. Um, in Raid, you probably prefer the knockback over a slight self heal increase, but you could make both work. Moving down to the second tier, Hammer of Genesis. Damaging a new enemy grants you 2% haste for 10 seconds up to 5 stacks. In Mythic Plus, you could maintain this pretty easily. Anytime you're pulling a trash pull, you're getting that haste maxed out. If you're running that Feral Affinity, getting a little bit of extra damage out there, you could be building this into sort of a damage dealing build. It might be good for 2 versus 2. The only problem is, I guess, is you only got 2 new enemies in the game, and after 2 seconds, it's gone. I take that back. This isn't great for ranked PvP. Um, Perhaps pets, if pets are included as new enemies, so when demons are called in from demonology warlocks or unholy death knights call into the ghouls, those kind of new targets, you can get some haste, but it's very situational. It's a tough sell. Sparkling Drift Globe Core, when reduced below 35%, you stun nearby enemies for three seconds. This effect may only occur once every five minutes. They must think that a three second stun is really good to give this a five minute cooldown. I don't know if this is worth taking with that long of a cooldown. It's a great effect, don't get me wrong. This, this is likely to save your life in a lot of cases. Um, but if you're playing with teammates that have stuns and they're already using them to stop you from dying, it's on diminishing return with a really long cooldown. Not sold on it. Now we got the Soul Steel Clamps. After 5 seconds of standing still, incoming stun and incapacitate durations are reduced by 30%. Last 5 seconds once you start moving. This is crazy OP. What the? What the? Oh man, this is going to make me trying to rank the... This makes it so hard to rank the Covenants. What? After 5 seconds of standing still, incoming stuns and incapacitate. So polymorphs are incapacitate effects. You could reduce a polymorph by 30%, which is... Better than Relentless, I'm pretty sure. And stuns. So if you're anticipating a mage to blink on top of you for a Dragon's Breath Polymorph, just stand still, let it happen. 30% less. If you think a rogue's gonna switch to you, jump in a bear form, chill out, kidney shots 30% less. And it lasts for five seconds after you start moving. That is easily, like, that might be the best PvP Covenant trait, period. At least for Resto Druid, because you got a problem with stunts. Um, and to some degree, incapacitate effects. A freezing trap. If a hunter tries to stun you into a freezing trap, there's a good chance that you'll reduce it. This thing's insane. All right. Moving down here to the regenerating materials. Casting and receiving healing has a chance to improve the remaining uh, quality of life. Resilient plumage. Fall damage decreased by 20% after falling damage you take is reduced by 0% for 30 seconds. Uh, you're not really taking fall damage. That's and there's no real pressure to pick either one of these, so it's just kind of whatever. 
Bronze call to action. After using 120 spells and abilities, your next spell and ability summons Bronze, who attacks and heals your target. So you just get a little bit of extra throughput after casting a ton of spells. I mean, even if you cast it as an instant spell on a one and a half second GCD, it's still taking you close to, what is that, like two minutes at least. But you, you could get him called in at a critical moment, maybe right when your cooldowns are all down. He's just going to be some extra throughput, right? And perhaps if you end up being able to plan him a little bit, you could line him up to trade with some cooldowns. This is a solid pick for PvP. Uh, in my mind, Soulsteel Clamps is the best PvP Covenant trait. It's probably even better than the shield immunity from Necrolords because the enemy players can knock it off. Whereas this, I guess, you no, know, it, it lasts indefinitely, right? Because it, it only starts to re count down after five seconds. I mean, Forge Light Prime Me Mechanicos, this solid, just, it removes a lot of the things that are really difficult for rest of the to deal with just with that that right there you get a little bit of extra healing with the vial and you've got the kindred spirits just boosting up your healing and boosting up the damage of your team i mean that what can you ask better than that for rest of druid man kyrian kyrian might be at least for pvp kyrian might be the go-to or at least at the moment it's a it's a hard sell or it's a hard choice i should say uh, right now the covenants are looking pretty evenly matched in terms of my ranking video that i'm going to be doing later on um, so but this is going to conclude uh, the video here for the kyrians i hope that this information is helpful and useful to you in your endeavors into the shadow lands make sure please that to like the video if you liked it there's something that helped you or something you didn't know uh, and subscribe to the channel that way you, everybody gets helped out that way you know the videos are live my subscriber goes up my count goes up my ego gets to feel good because I, I, I don't know. I'm, try, I'm trying to sell it. Maybe I'm not selling it too well. Anyway, we'll see you in the next video. I appreciate you watching.